Hi everyone, welcome back to this channel. Today we have a new video. I tried to make it uh, a bit faster this time and here it is. We start with this preview and next we have unboxing as always. Feel free to pause this video every time you need. Here we can see some of my sizes and the closer shot with this label. For this model I think you should go half size up in my opinion. They are keep saying these are uh, very sustainable but look at this space how much is uh, this box bigger. I don't see the need for this big you know. Anyway we don't find anything else in the box. Here we can see both of them and we start with the left foot and we are gonna see both of them because I want to see if the quality is consistent or not. I decided to give them a try although at the beginning I didn't like it the shape so I was avoiding them already for a few months you know but I said I will give them a try just to see how they are if they are better than others or if they worth the price you know so let's just start. We can see here the prime knit. I have to say that is quite airy. I did like it. Here I'm checking the midsole. Well, because it has this enclosure, obviously it doesn't feel that soft, uh, this midsole. In this shot, we can see a bit better this kind of sole that it has uh, it's a bit strange for me i didn't know if i would like it or not we can see there the pieces that they are merging together i thought that would be a problem maybe but while i was checking them to be honest i didn't have issues they didn't open or anything and i even like it this material which is not rubber from continental that one is much softer more sticky this one doesn't make as much noise as that one and i kind of like it this one to be honest here we can see the insoles unfortunately they came this way very dirty i think uh, adidas they should have been a bit more careful before sending them you know just to be sure that they are clean enough and the customer gets what he pays you know at the end of the day The color of this insole is light gray and it feels a bit more um, rigid than others that I tried so far, which look the same. In this shot we can see the footbed, it has a layer of nylon which is thick that covers the boost material. I wish that layer it wasn't there because it's just making them a bit more rigid than otherwise would be. And also we can see the internal label, we can see they are made in 09-2021. As you can tell in the front end we don't have the adidas logo, on the back we have some reflective material and also this logo on the tongue is reflective, you will see it a bit later. And here we have the right foot because like I said I want to see if both are well made or not. To be honest I didn't find any issues in both of them, they were well uh, stitched and glued. Here we can see the external labels. About the knit, I would say it's very similar to the one find it in uh, Ultra Boost 1 DNA, if not the same, very similar because they look and feel the same. Uh, the padding is a bit less in this case, although on the tongue we still have padding and I wish it wasn't there to be honest because they will give you too much uh, heat in the summer. On the back we can see that stitching. I don't know if you can notice there. The thickness of this cage I think is the thinnest I've seen so far in Ultra Boost. I'm not saying it's something really bad but it's just something that I notice. I think it has like one millimeter and where the laces are getting in they might have their other two or three millimeters. 
in the shot we can see again the sole like i said i didn't have any issues the heel is reinforced with this material which is making them very rigid on the back but i didn't have any issues with that so they do have comfort the exposed ultra boost holes have the size of my nails Here I had to use this lint roller once again because they are so dirty and I couldn't see them this way, you know. This is not the way to send a new pair of sneakers. Anyway, let's move on. Like I said, these uh, insoles are a bit more rigid than I wish they were and the uh, thickness is around 3 millimeters. Adidas Supernova has better insoles in my opinion and those are half of the price, just saying. And here we can see the laces, the size of them and the upper material from these sneakers. To be honest, the laces are just perfect. I like the elasticity on them. The tips are very thick. They have an oval shape, but they are thick. They are well made. Nothing to complain. Like I said, we can see here a bit better this knit. Very airy, even on the instep. I did like it a lot. It's very stretchable also. And we can see the padded zones on the sneakers. They do have a bit less than uh, Ultra Boost 1 and 5 in padding, but I wish they had even less. I wish they were made like uh, Ultra Boost 20. Those, I like it a bit more than these ones. Here I was actually noticing that they have a bit less padding and it's a bit thinner than DNA 1 and 5 and even 4. We can see here how stretchable is this material. I have to say they are a bit more wider than other uh, Ultra Boost. 1, 5, 20 even. It's not as wide as this one, which I like it, by the way. The reflective material on the heel, I like it also. Thank God for that. Here I'm checking this heel. It's very stiff, but it didn't give me problems. So I like it this way. This web-like uh, enclosure gives them a bit of rigidity, but when you have them on your feet, you don't notice. So I didn't have issues with this web-like design. Here, this info I think is very useful. If you want to compare two different pair of Ultra Boost, different models, you just open two different tabs in YouTube and compare these images, just to let you know more or less how wide they are, how large. The weird thing on them is that although the insoles are a bit narrower, overall the sneaker is not narrow, it's half of a centimeter more than in other places, so I like it that on this pair. Basically the upper has a very important uh, role in these sneakers and they are wider because of that upper. In this shot you can see both uh, the soles and the insoles, the sizing, if you want you can pause here the video and compare with the other videos. And here we have the weight test. I personally see these sneakers more or less lifestyle sneakers so for me isn't that important how much weight they have to be honest but I'm doing it for the public. As you can tell they have a bit more than others. Usually they have around 600 grams, these ones have 650, I'm okay either way, I don't mind. Pause here if you need to compare. In this shot I'm showing you the kind of arch that I have, the instep that I have, the size of my feet and how is the size of these insoles in comparison with my feet. As you can tell, 
the length is almost the same like my feet so that's why I suggest you to go for half size up because for me I think they are a bit too too smaller for my feet now everyone can wear them the way they want if they like to be snug in their feet I don't have any problem but for me I like it a bit more relaxed so this way I, I wouldn't wear them this way if I had to keep them I will go for size 42 or 8.5 in US so like I said the insoles are a bit narrower but the sneakers are wider enough so no issues with these ones and finally we have the on fit shots you can see here in real time how much time I need to get them inside my feet. The opening is big enough, I didn't have issues. Only, like I said, the size, I will go for a half size up and that's it. The last pair of Ultra Boost that I tried was Ultra Boost 20 and of course here I, I forget they have um, padding on the tongue so this is very important because if you have padding you don't need to tighten those laces this much otherwise you will lose comfort because I have a high instep so for me uh, they have to be a bit more relaxed on my feet because of that instep so I had to reduce that part of fasten up those laces so in comparison with DNA 1 and 5 these ones, I like them a bit better, but you have to go half size up. I like it better because they don't have as much as those, the padding inside is a bit less. Not by much, but is a bit less. So that's why I like it a bit better. And I like it that they have a reflective materials on the heel, on the back. That's also very important for me. Having them on my feet, I do feel that they are a bit more shorter, these sneakers. That's why I said you should go the next size up. Here I'm using the rule of thumb. Normally you should have a bit more space than I have here in this image. So if you buy a pair and they are staying the way they are staying these ones on my feet go for a size up because it's not your size they will be too small for you so for the rule of thumb basically you need to put your thumb in front of your big toe or the biggest toe you have and if it has space enough to put it there that is your size the correct size So having them on my feet, here I'm trying to flex a bit this uh, midsole because of that cage, that web cage, plasticky from the sole. You cannot flex this much this midsole, but it doesn't affect. The comfort inside is actually very good. It's almost the same like in Ultra Boost 20. So they are good enough. I like the cushioning on them. Here I'm trying to show you which ones are the uh, reflective materials you can see here on the back we have them here again I'm trying to see how wide they are if they are wide enough and I have to say that for me they are wide enough only the size is a bit too small but like I said, go for half size up and everything is fine. And here I will leave you a sample with the audio from the camera, the original uh, sound, just to see more or less how noisy they are or noiseless they are.
To be honest, one of the best from Ultraboost in this regard. They don't make any noise, I like them the way they are. Very good compound for that sole in comparison with the one from Continental. So I guess it came the time for pros and cons. For pros, I thought I want like this design, but actually it kind of works. I like it in general, so the design is good in my opinion. If you are wondering how to make it better, just get rid of that extra padding from the tongue. Less is more, so if you have that padding on the tongue, you will sweat, you know. I want to have the same tongue like I have in Ultra Boost 20. That one is thoughtful. I like the cushioning in these sneakers, but I want more midsole. It's like you want to do something well, but you, do, you don't put 100% in that product. Well, give more cushioning, 10 millimeters more, in on the heel and in the forefoot and you change completely this these sneakers instead of having i don't know how much this can have probably 22 with 12 i'm just guessing well make it 30 something with 20 something and then you have a real good uh, cushioning sneaker because at the end we all want to have good cushioning so and that depends of the thickness of that midsole so just do it well you know just do it the way the people expect it to be so continuing with the pros um, they have few colors on these sneakers i want to see much more in the future um, hopefully those logos will be on the lateral will be reflective because it's useful that uh, material so use it other thing that i like it with them is that they are a bit more wider in comparison with other ultra boost so that's a very good thing you know in many cases i felt a bit cramped inside because the the sneaker is a bit too narrow in this case i didn't have that issue um like i said you need to go half size up in my opinion with this model but that's not a, really a problem you know just instead of 41 and something like in my case just take 42 that's it you problem solved you know i don't really care that much the only problem is that the public won't know at the beginning so you'll have to buy more till you know your size that's the only issue in general In this shot we can see Ultra Boost 20 in comparison with this uh, Ultra Boost Web. So which one do I pick? Well obviously Ultra Boost 20 for me. They are still a better buy than these ones. What I want to see in the future is a merge in between these two models and have just one sneaker version 2.0. What I mean by that? I want to see the same uh, upper from Ultra Boost 20, the same tongue much cushioning i mean thicker missile and from the adidas web well i want to see the cage i like it although it's very thin i didn't mind the reflective materials i like it the sole because it's not that sticky and the shape of the sneaker because it's not too narrow so this is the difference in between them i think it's space for both of them both of these models you just pick the one you like it more in my opinion for me i prefer ultra boost 20 but i also like it ultra boost web so if you have if you want to have two different models from ultra boost well you can use both of them in my opinion it's up to you in the end they are running on the same price range 180 euros or dollars so pick the one you want to to buy about cons like i said in ultra boost web well i wish they were having a bit more cushioning like always because i want 30 something on that missile i don't care if it's four foot or heel put 30 something millimeters 12 with 22 is not enough it's just basic cushioning for me to be honest so if you want to make them good step up the game 
as my final thoughts i think this sneaker is not the way i was expecting when i saw that web sole i thought they would be firm they are not that firm like i was thinking thank god i did check them and i know now how they are and i actually like it a bit more than i was thinking like i said i can't say much more about these sneakers um, i like it the way they are but they can be improved obviously pick the one you like it more i will end here this video if you have any questions please let me know don't forget to subscribe it's very helpful for me see you next time and please stay safe have a nice day